the external aspect of the Torah. And in comparison to the internal aspect of God, this is nothing in comparison. What does that mean? It means like this. The true quality of the Torah, the innermost core, the depth of the supernal thought and divine wisdom of God, is that it's fused and one with the Ein Saif. The Ein Saif light of God, the infinite of God. It's in a perfect unity with God. So what does that mean in relation to the world? We're saying that the Torah is the vitality of the world. So what's the problem with that? Well, relative to the infinite of God, the world, which is finite, is absolutely sheer nothingness and non-existence. It's a non-entity, the world. As God was the same before he created the world and after he created the world, there's no, absolutely no change in God. And therefore, the world relative to him is of no account. Right? Therefore, to laud God and his Torah, that it is the vivifying force of the world, and that's the only, that's external aspect of the Torah. That's the way it relates to the world. But what it is, is one with the infinite Ein Saif, the or Ein Saif of Hashem, the, lim, the limitlessness of God. The world in relation to that is absolute nothing. In other words, you can't, there's nothing to laud about that it is the vital force of the world in comparison to really what Torah is, one with the infinite of God and the world in, in relation to God is absolute nothingness. So it's like, it's like, I don't know. That's not a good example, but you know, a wealthy, you know, billionaire and a dime that he gives is, you know, got really relative to the fact he's a billionaire, a dime is nothing in comparison to his billions and yet it is something because it's a dime and a dime and a dime again and again <laughs> so we'll make the billions right so there's even something relative there even though the attitude would be that it's really nothing so all the more so the world is really nothing in comparison to god because it's finite and god's infinite and the torah that's one with god also has that infinite quality and therefore that's its true quality. So in that sense, this inward aspect of the Torah, the true quality that it's one with God, is no mortal heartfelt joy or delight can be had, but it's really God's delight. We can delight in the fact that it gives me life because I understand what life is and I understand that study of Torah that gives me life. I can appreciate that. I have joy in that. But if it's one with God, well, ultimately, that's a heartfelt joy and a pleasure of God. He delights in it. He only understands its ways ultimately and knows its station and quality through his self-knowledge. And we don't. It's beyond. It's concealed from the mortal eyes. In a way, like, you know, as much as we might know about a person, there's so much that we don't know of, of a person that's beyond us. So just to give that as a metaphor of God that's infinitely even more so, that it's only something he can truly delight in. From us, it's, it's beyond us. It's beyond our you know, appreciation and understanding. It's God's delight. It's his delight. And that's what it means, therefore, that, that it will be before him as a delight, specifically before God, it's a delight. This aspect of the Torah the internal aspect of the Torah, that it is one with God.
So now we can explain this sublime level of Torah that God alone delights in it, right? With that now, we can understand that this comes to nurture our souls. Not that we understand it, not that even, you know, we don't get it. Because we don't understand infinite. But what it does do is it descends and nurtures the souls of the Jewish people. And they are, for this reason, the Midrash calls the Torah a craft. Because just like a craftsman has to skillfully uh, hone their talent, nurture their talent that they have from youth. So likewise, this innermost aspect of the Torah is to, we need to hone our talent to appreciate or to to allow it um, sort to to come and be like come I that's the right word to use here to become my reality to become a part of me. In other words, this is something that transcends the world that yet um, nurtures our souls because our souls ultimately do transcend this world. It transcends, nurtures our souls and gives us a capacity that we can connect to God beyond our joy, beyond our understanding. Now, as far as the external aspect of the Torah, that does bring delight to the world and to an individual, right? That will bring you delight because that's something you can understand and appreciate because we know what life means and therefore we know that the Torah is, is one with God and its external aspect brings life. The external aspect of, of Torah brings me life, but that's the external aspect. So just to 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 bring this home for me to say that ah when i learned torah it's just you know picks me up and gives me focus it gives me you know all these things is there a truth to that absolutely and so be it that we should all experience that and, and sense that and feel that and know that but know at the same time that's the external aspect of Torah. The inward aspect of Torah is that I'm bound up in one with God. Period. A hard period. That's what it is. And that's much more profound, but it, the problem is it's not as expressive because that's of an infinite quality. And we're finite people, so, you know, the finite qualities is something that we can relate to better. Right? So Torah is given both an inward and an external expression. The inward is it's one with God. The external is that it's life-giving. Right? With this now, we can understand the following. There is an external part of Torah, and we need to appreciate that. And therefore, when we study and we observe the mitzvahs, that's external, that's bringing life. That's important to know. However, there's something unique about the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, it carried in it the luchas, the tablets. Tablets were something unique about them. Those tablets in the Ark, in the Ark of the Covenant that was in the Holy of Holies, that took up space and did take up space at the same time. Something we learned a couple of weeks ago in our Torah studies class. Right. It was also written, carved in stone, through and through. There was no front or back. Right? When you looked at the the carved through and through, that's not carved, but you know, if it was, you're reading it here, I'm the Lord your God, turn it around, read it this way, it's on backwards, it should be backwards, but it wasn't, I'm the Lord your God, 
Hmm. Pretty, pretty amazing. Meaning that the Ark of the Covenant, the, the, the tablets in the Ark of the Covenant, just as the Ark sort of was beyond space because it took up space and didn't take up space at the same time, the tablets, in a sense, did not have a front and a back. They only had a front because they are expression of the internal aspect of Torah, which is only one with God, period. One with the infinite. Right? That's what it was. And therefore, it had to be carried on the shoulders of the Levites. Why? Why did it have to be carried on the shoulder? Because what's the shoulder? The shoulder is the connection between front and back. It connects the front and the back of the individual. So here is a Torah that only has a front to it. Although the Torah, as we learn it, has a front and a back to it, meaning internal and external. But the Ark of the Covenant only has a front to it because it represents only connection. Connection to God. Infinite connection to God. That's beyond any kind of description. So now the Levites have to carry this on their shoulders. Why? In order to connect that concept that usually we as humans are external. External means that we all view things as a means to an end. So what's Torah? Oh, Torah here. You know, it's you know, it's like you get a washing machine and you don't know how to run it. So you get the manual and you know how to run it. Oh, God gave, created a world and he got to know how to run it, how to run this world. So he gave us a manual called the Torah. And through that manual, you bring life. Right through the manual, you you can run your washing machine and clean clothes. So that's external, though. Now there is that aspect of Torah, absolutely. However, human nature is that that's all how we would view Torah merely. But no, we need to connect the back, the external, to the front. That know that there's a front also and there's an ex internal aspect the torah is really about your attachment and connection to god period so therefore the the mitzvah was that this aspect of the torah that's carried in the ark of the covenant the tablets that only have a front has to be carried on the shoulders to bring the message to the back right bring the front of you to the back of you bring the front of god of the torah is about connection to an infinite connection to god that's beyond any kind of description that it's god's joy right that aspect of torah but that connection and others we're even doing it just to bring god joy will be a way that will be expressed and we're it's bringing that to the back of Torah, connecting the two, that we have to know that there's two components. And therefore, that's why King David forgot that law. Because what's forgetfulness? Forgetfulness means that that comes only because there's maybe only means to an end, but not an end in itself. There's not the front, there's only the back. And therefore, you only see Torah as a means to some end. Forgetfulness comes that way when 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 what you are experiencing is not an end in itself. Is only a means to an end. Right? It's not inward. It's not an inward connection. So since he looked at Torah as an external component, not connecting it on the shoulder, right, to the internal aspect of it, the deeper aspect of it. Um, that's how he looked at Torah. So that's what he forgot. He forgot that law that is about connecting the front to the back, the back to the front by the Levites carrying the Ark of the Covenant that carries the tablets in on the shoulder. Wow. That is like beyond that message. 
So what does that message mean for you and I? Many of us come here to learn Torah because, and learn time in particular, because it soothes the soul, because it gives healing, because it, um, it uplifts me, it makes me wiser, it makes me kinder. All those things are true. Absolutely. But if that's it, it becomes a song for you as King David. And for that, King David got punished. Because it is true that that's an aspect of Torah. But that's the external aspect. Connect it. Bind it to the internal aspect. To the infinite quality of Torah. What's that? We are being bound up with God Almighty. The Ein Soif the limitlessness of God in our study of Torah, period. Ah, that's not tantalizing because it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, you know, what am I getting from it? You're getting it from it. You're getting God from it. And like in human relations many times, we're just interested in what we get out of a person rather than having the connection to the person. When ultimately, you know, it's the connection to the person that's the most important thing, right? A loved one, right? A parent, a child, a spouse, a sibling, a fellow Jew, the connection itself. And from there, from that essential bond and connection, then we can also bring it to the backside that it will be also the external aspect will also be in sync with its more profound internal connection. So in relationships, it's really important, this notion. And with God, that's the relationship that we have that will allow us to have appropriate and proper human relations if you got that folks you got a lot that's something very beautiful from the Alta Rebbe today big gift Lori learning about Tzimtzum is that part of what happened to David mm, that's tomorrow night's class in JLI Tzimtzum <laughs> um hmm The internal aspect of the Torah is before Tzimtzum. But then there's Tzimtzum. Yeah. So the internal aspect, the deeper aspect, the Pneumius, not the external, but the internal is a much more profound, much a much more profound um, yeah, government. All right. Um, yeah, so Tzimtzum, uh, you know, it depends on what, in what aspect of Tzimtzum we're talking about. Tzimtzum allows that we can have an external aspect of Torah. Tzimtzum allows that now the infinite of God that is bound up with Torah, the divine wisdom, now, on the contraction of that, will allow to from it that it will come into this world and give vitality. It will give life, which it does for us, right? But we should always remember that as much as life giving it is, there's something even greater the connection, the attachment to God Himself. Ah, that doesn't has doesn't have the feel good stuff to it. That's the external aspect that has the feel good stuff, the means to the end. But you have to realize that this an end in itself that's is you know is is the beginning and primary point. Any other questions? Any other comments? All right, amazing. 
don't see any other questions. I hope this was very clear. So then we're going to have Rambam now. I'm Rabbi Rani Fine, come to you for Chabad Zuch and Kadesh in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege, a pleasure to share with you. Natani, have an amazing, great day. Thank you all for joining.